Well, here we are, and here you are, and yes. here you are. Um, it's delightful to have you and Annette with us this morning. And like I say, um, in my 35 years of ministry, I've never done anything like this. I haven't have either. You? Yeah. <laughs> you want to do it or just, sure. just keep the street going that Let's we don't go. ever do it? <laughs> well, first, we, we want to hear about you. We want to know about you. And could you tell us a bit about yourself and about your family and about your pathway here? Okay. Um, Annette is my wife. <laughs> we have been married 33 years, and um, we have two children, uh, a son and a daughter. Our son is um, 33 years old, 32, <laughs> That's a, 32, and um, he's married. He's been married for several years. They have two daughters, um, uh, Briley, who is 10, and Alexa, who is 9, and um, they live in the Burn area of Indiana. Uh, and then my son, or my daughter, uh, she's been married for about six years, and they have one daughter. Mm -hmm. Name is Jaden, and we were blessed to have her yesterday. Oh, wow. So, and she's young, right? She's uh, 19 months. Okay, yeah. so you guys need an afternoon nap, don't yes. you? <laughs> uh, so um, that's the family. Um, and Annette and I uh, have been in ministry for over 20 years, so... Um, celebrating 15 years of being ordained as an elder this year wow, and great. doing the call to fruitfulness uh, uh, doing that and so um, we are currently serving in Huntington or not Huntington Kendallville mm -hmm. Indiana and um, oh, wait a minute that's okay because I still think I'm at Broadway Church yes <laughs> so don't worry about that that's typical I guess <laughs> yes it is yes, isn't yes. it when you move so much so uh, I've served there three years um, and uh, it's been a difficult three years because of COVID. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys oh have had goodness, experienced yes. that as well, but uh, COVID has really been rough. So almost your entire time there, it was in the middle of COVID, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Holy I had started cow. not long after that, COVID mm -hmm. hit. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So um, I went to seminary at United Theological Seminary. Me too. Did you really? <laughs> could you feel my aura there? I could, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I graduated from there. Um, what else do you want to know? Well, what did you do before seminary? Oh, before seminary. Well, let me just tell you, I asked that question. Who was I with? Was that at Coffee with Cindy? It was Leroy, wasn't it? Because I said, I'm not certain what, what Steve did before he went into ordained ministry. And Leroy, I think, perked up and said, I think he was a neurosurgeon. No, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Actually, I was a stripper. Oh, my God. So, uh, <laughs> that's even better, and it didn't come up. At, it didn't come up a coffee. No, with Cindy. no, no, no. Uh, I was a pre-press plate maker and stripper. Uh, they called them strippers back oh, in the day. Oh, that kind of stripper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually a stripper. So. so wait a minute. What kind of stripper did you think he was? <laughs> Just checking out. <laughs> I got to have fun with this, right? It, yeah. My, yes. my wife likes it when I share that I was a stripper, but it was in. If you've been in the printing business, you know, before computers, we actually did everything by hand. And so I would shoot the film. Uh, I would um, do all the pre-press work on getting the plates ready to go to the press. And so they call that a stripper because when you work in four colors, you have to strip four different flats, four different sheets of paper, and to get the four different colors on the press. So oh. They called it a stripper. So mm -hmm. that's... That's, what, that's okay. where that term comes okay, from. We'll so go when that, you go we'll tell wait. people that, make sure you, you, you let them know that part yes. of it. So. <laughs> well, be sure. So. so boys and girls, don't go out telling people that your new minister is a stripper. Yes. Just don't yes. do that unless you can complete the story. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So, but so, I was in the printing business for Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your um, faith journey growing up because that's an interesting one. Yes. Um, as I was looking at the scripture today about loving as we have been loved. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in an African-American United Methodist Church in Muncie, Indiana, and our pastor was African-American. The church congregation was predominantly African-American, even though it was multicultural. Um, and so I grew up singing in the youth choir and participating in Sunday school and Bible study and everything in a, in a, where I was the minority in the group. And, and um, the story is that my pastor's uh, never met his dad. He was, uh, they lived in the South, and his dad was lynched and killed, mm -hmm. 
and his body thrown in a swamp before he was even born while his mother right. was with him with child. And he shared that story, and, and, but he loved me. He, he told me to call him Papa. And um, his love for me was what drew me to God. Because if God, if he could express God's love in such a way, uh, it's somebody like me who reflected the, the person that murdered his dad, then I wanted that, to serve that God. I wanted to, to, to love that God in, in a way that loved, that he loved me. Wow. Uh, my pastor did, Reverend J.C. Williams, uh, senior. I don't know if you, he was from the North Conference. I don't know if you ever no, knew him know. or not. But he had such an influence on my life that I wanted to go into ministry and serve God, this God that he served and expressed in loving me. And so I saw God in, in through him, through the love that he showed and expressed to us. And so um, in loving one another, that, that, that stuck out to me today. Uh, so I am, uh, that's my faith journey, and so that's where my journey began, was at Trinity Church in Muncie, and then um, I got called into ministry when I was in high school, and uh, talked to my pastor about that, and, and we kind of uh, examined that, and, and then I thought, well, no, I'm not good enough to go into ministry, you know. I'm not, I don't think God really wants me to do ministry, and so I ran from God, and I I, I showed God that I wasn't good enough. You know, I started partying and, and drinking and, and doing things, you know, you shouldn't do as a teenager. And, and um, it seemed to me like God was just standing there with his arms closed like this, just saying, okay, Steve, when are you going to come to your senses? You know, kind of like the, uh, the prodigal son, you know, how he came to his senses in the pigsty, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I finally came to my senses when I was released from the military, um, with a, um, a, it was an honorable discharge, but it was for alcohol abuse. And so um, that journey coming home was a difficult journey because I wasn't gonna come home because of all the shame and all of that, that baggage that came with it. And so um, my pastor uh, talked to me over the phone and, and encouraged me to come home, and I did. And, and I had a, a mystical experience on my way home. Um, I had, during my time, in the military, tore up my car, uh, drinking and driving, and you shouldn't do that, of course, but I tore up my car, and my front end was like this, um, and I went through three front tires coming home on the road, um, and then, I'll, I'll never forget it, I got, I was on 44 coming through Missouri, and there was an exit sign for, um, what was that, uh, Rolo, Rolla, R-O-L-L-A, um, and it was an exit there, and I he got my last flat tire. Right there was the exit to Rolla. And so I got off. There was a Goodyear tire station right there. Uh, so I pulled off, the, pulled into the Goodyear tire station, had him uh, just parked it there. It was after hours, and um, called my dad, and he told me there was a Lutheran church just around the corner from where I was at. And he had talked to the Lutheran pastor that lived in, across the street from his house, and they said that I could go stay in the parsonage overnight. So God had a place for me to go and stay the night came back the next morning and my tire was fixed my car was ready to go and so I went up paid for the car tire um, got back in the car and as I was traveling down the road it was like as if God's hands were underneath that car because before it was just vibrating and causing all kinds of trouble and then after that wow it's like God was just mm -hmm. carrying me home like okay Steve here I got you Wow. You know, I got you. And the, talk about being in the palm of God's hand. I yeah. felt and sensed that oh at that moment. So, mm. What and, a story. Yeah. So what was it like then telling your dad that you were feeling a different kind of call? Well, um, it was, I was nervous, of course. Yes. But he was very, um, um, very much encouraging. So me. he probably saw it in you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And where, where, where did Annette come into the story? Well, I didn't let her know until we, I was dating her and I proposed to her. And I told her, I said, I feel like God's calling me into ministry somehow. I don't know exactly how yet. I was kind of fudging it just a little bit. And she says, that's okay. Um, she says, I can, be, I can be the wife of a, a, a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> a Sunday school teacher. I was like, okay, good. She's on board, you know. 
<laughs> and then later I told her I was feeling called into the ministry, full-time ministry. And, and she stuck and with And she you. stuck with me. Yep. Yep. So uh, she didn't know. I, she didn't marry a pastor uh, when she got married. Yeah. I wasn't a pastor mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were in church together and doing things together. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a familiar story to me. Does it? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard your story. So. Well, uh, th- not about me, but here's my call to ministry. I, there were many females around, so I used to play Barbie, and Barbie was always married to a minister. And um, Ken, you know, Pastor Ken? Uh-huh. Um, and Doug and I were married for 10 years before I felt called into ministry, so that was kind of a stunning moment, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So then you went to United, a good place to go. Mm-hmm. They, they make great graduates at United, don't they? Um, and then where did you serve? Um, I served several places. I served, um, when I was in seminary, I served at Converse, uh, United Methodist Church. Then I went from there to um, Living Water United Methodist Church, mm-hmm. which was a merger of three different congregations at the time. And then I went from there to Kiwana and Pleasant Hill, which was a two-point charge. Mm-hmm. Um, I was there for three years, and then I went back. I was at um, Converse for five, um, Lynn Grove, uh, or um, Living Water for uh, three, Kiwana for three. Then I went to Markle. I was there for six years. And then I went from Markle to Huntington. I was at Huntington for three years, and then I went to Kendallville for three years. Wow, that's you gotten around, haven't yes, you? Yes. yes, I'll say, I'll say. But this is the furthest south you've been, is this that is, right? Yes. That's right. So welcome to southern Indiana, Thank so you. to speak. Um, so what do you love about ministry? I love about uh, ministry the most is just getting to know the people, yeah. building relationships, mm-hmm. sharing Christ with those mm-hmm. around me. Yeah. And and just show showing the love of Christ, you know, and helping uh reveal Christ's love to them and, and just explaining about God and, 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 and the oneness of God and, and how um, we are all part of God, how God breathed his breath into us and to share that story and how we are children of God and God's calling us back to him. And I just love to, to share that story yeah. with people. Wow. Well, you do. Yeah. Clearly, you love to st- tell that story. Um, you don't know much about this congregation, as much as you'll know in six weeks and then in the years to come. Um, from the past experiences you've had at churches, where do you see God's love in congregations? Um, I, I think it's mainly in their hospitality towards others that are uh, different than them, you know, that are more accepting of people who just come um, seeking to, to seeking something. When somebody shows up to church, they're usually going through a difficult time. Um, they've moved or they're going through a divorce or have some loss in their, their life. And, and so a congregation that can just come around people that are, are here that you don't see regularly, you know, and just love on them and, and, and try to express God's love to them, that they do belong, that there's somebody that cares about them. I think that's what I like the most about uh, how the congregation does ministry and, mm-hmm. and reaching out into the community yeah. doing ministry. Yeah, that's really important. And and you all do that really well. Do you know that? You do. I um I <coughs> experience that. I let me tell you about these folks and um I experience that not only when I'm with you, but I experience that when I'm away from you. Um when I see Mildred Grist, or I see um, Kit McGee, or I see anyone of the folks who can't make it here on Sunday morning, the Davises, for instance, um, always their first question is, how is so-and-so? Or I just heard from someone, or somebody came by to see me. It's just like this multiplication that goes on and on. And I know that happens in churches. I know that. But you are really, really good at that. And um, I hope you celebrate that um, in many ways because it doesn't just show with how you are with one another that you know. How many of you volunteer here in the community? 
this is amazing, just amazing. And I said this to you, Steve, that um, you all are leaders here in this community, and not just sort of pass-through leaders. Some of you have been at it for a really long time, and you stick at it. Even when the going gets tough, you stick with it. And there's something to be said about that, um, the ability to lead in such a way that um, you're welcome to be leaders in this community. Um, that's really quite remarkable. I think about this sermon title. So when you think about this sermon title, what do you think? What's love got to do with it? It's a secondhand emotion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so are, now are you all singing it? Uh -huh. Okay, good. That's just what we want you to be doing. Because I think, I used to think when Tina would get up and sing that, that that was sort of disparaging, that love was a second-hand emotion. You know, it wasn't first-hand, it was second-hand. But for me, when I think of this, what's love got to do with it, in the scripture that we heard this morning, love is a second-hand emotion. We're not the first to have love. We love because God first loved us. And when Jesus, in this this scripture was talking with the disciples. It's the same scripture when he shifts from calling them servant mm. to calling them friend. That's a huge shift. And when Jesus says, um, love as I have loved you, that's a whole different thing. That's the secondhand emotion. You're receiving love from God. And that's not just small potatoes, that's a, that's a big deal. And it shifts and changes how you are loving to others and how others receive you. Um, I think having a secondhand emotion is a good deal at this point. I am reminded of um, a beautiful poem. Um, I get poetry every morning as a devotion. And this was part of what I heard on Thursday morning. May I love as you have loved me, and live gently, love deeply, forgive freely, give generously, bless boldly, mm -hmm. and offer myself humbly, that by your grace you will live fully in me. Just let that rest with you for a minute. What a difference that makes when you think about loving as Jesus loves, it doesn't mean I'll love you if, hmm. or I'll love you but. It means I'll just love you. No exceptions, nothing other than just love. And we've talked about that a lot this past year, um, a year sort of of healing for all of us. I think you all don't know this, but um, when Doug and I came here, I'm going to speak for us, um, we'd spent 35 years almost living in the underbelly of the church. You know, that's kind of where pastors live, sometimes in the underbelly, and we'd gotten um, not kind of cynical, we were very cynical about church. Um, I hesitated when the DS called me about coming back. I wasn't certain I wanted to do that. But something, um, being cradled, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that image, um, walking from the bedroom to tell Doug, I think I'm going to think about doing this. So that was, that was a movement. I'm going to think about thinking about it. And then I thought about it, and then we decided that it was the right thing for us to do. And I don't think either one of us knew or thought or even imagined um, being in a place like this where people... Um, understand that love is a second-hand emotion and live that way. And what a um, tremendous blessing it's been for us. Um, you taught us that church is beautiful again. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to learn. It's the best. It's the best. I'm so glad you're here and so glad you're coming and I'm so glad you get a chance to meet this guy. Um, we've spent some time together, we've been on the phone together, sometimes talking business and then sometimes Tracy and I take him to a Mexican restaurant and, <laughs> yeah. and, and we had a whole lot of fun, didn't we? we? Did. Good food and good fun. Um, yes. I know you're like that just in the few times we've been together that you understand that love is a second-hand emotion. And, um, 
I feel um, I love this congregation a lot. And I don't want to give it up, but I'll give it to you. Okay. And be glad to. And you're in good hands. And you're in good hands. And Doug and I will just retire <coughs> again. And we'll be in good hands. <laughs> that next time you hear Tina Turner, even if she isn't saying in love, what's love got to do with it, that you'll go there with her and be reminded that a secondhand emotion's a good deal. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the love of Christ, the Christ who calls you friend, not just servant, Jesus calls you friend, and that you do already love without exception and without an if or an and or a but, you're just about love. And I know that will continue, and I'm just delighted for that. Just delighted. Yes. Just delighted. And I'm just, I'm glad to be following you as well. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I can see and sense the love that you have for each other, the congregation and yes. you. And um, that's great. Uh, I, I'm great. I'm, I'm grateful to be able to follow that as well. Okay. And I look forward to worshiping with this congregation uh, come July 3rd will be my first Sunday here and I get to heal, hear Bill preach <laughs> bring the word and I, I, I'm excited to hear him um, and to be here in ministry with you and see what God is going to do I just have a great sense that God is going to use you in a, in a mighty way here in, in Greenfield and I'm looking forward to seeing what God is going to do and how God is going to bless this town and bless you and, and this congregation mm -hmm. uh, as we serve and minister together. Yes. So. Would you pray for us? Sure. Okay. Oh, great. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come and to be in your house of worship, to come and to, to hear your word, to come and hear the scriptures read and just to feel and sense your love in our midst this morning. So God, we just pray that as we go forth from this place, as we continue to uh, do your ministry, that your love will be not just a secondhand emotion, but a firsthand emotion. And that Lord, that would be our number one goal is to love others as we have been loved by you. And so Lord, just pour out your spirit upon us and continue to use us in a mighty way to to be your servants of love in this world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Here's your pen. So, so I drop my pen and leave my glasses everywhere. So. <laughs>
bless, O oh Lord, these gifts. They are given to you in great love. Take them now into the world that your love might be shared through our gifts and through our love. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Why don't you come back over and get communion first? Okay. We say this every morning that we have communion, but it cannot be said enough that this table belongs to God. It doesn't belong to Bradley United Methodist Church or to any United Methodist Church, to any church. It simply is a place where we meet God. And because God is the giver of love, it's open to all people, no ifs, ands, or buts, just anyone whom God loves, that would be all of us. This is an open table and you're all invited. God is with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. It is good and beautiful to give God our praise. God, in love you create us. In love you claim us. In love you promise to be with us always, and you are. You judge the forces of oppression and lead us toward justice, toward a new Jerusalem in which everyone is beloved. As a sign of that hope, you invite us to your table. At this table, all are welcome and all are beloved. Where we, were, where we are all young and old, rich and poor, male and female, guilty and innocent, whole and broken, without distinction or judgment. Therefore, with all creation, we praise you with love and delight. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are all who come in your name, and blessed is Jesus, your Christ, who loved us as you love us. In love he taught and healed. He gathered the outcast. He loved the unlovely. In love he established a new realm. He built a new city. In love he healed the death. He gave us his spirit so we might love as he loved. As he did at that table and so many other times, Jesus did it again on the seashore. He took bread and blessed it and gave it to his friends. We feast on the miracle of your presence. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your Spirit on us, that we may be peace under love, and it will become part of us, so that your love is the love with which you love all people. In the name of the Spirit of Christ. Amen. 
on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take eat, this is my body, broken in love, in love for you. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, in a new covenant, which is the forgiveness of sin. And now, with the confidence of the beloved of God, we sing and pray together. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Now, friends, the invitation has been given, the table has been set, let us feast at this table of love.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourselves to us. As you have loved us, so may we love one another and all your children. Send us into the world, unafraid of all that is new and changing, steadfast in love and faithfulness. In the love of God, we pray. Amen. Let us stand together for the closing hymn. ministry here, I invited the children to come and help me with the benediction. I've done that for many times, but this church responded quite remarkably. I asked them to help the children out, so um, let's show them what we do. Isn't that about the most wonderful thing you've ever seen in a church? That is awesome. <laughs> yes. And then we do the benediction. Oh, oh Miss Charlotte, I didn't know you were here today. I'm so glad to see you. You want to stand right up here so you can see everybody and everybody can see you. And here, let me take your things. I'm going to put them right here so we won't forget them. Well, Charlotte, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you were here today. I sure am glad you were. So you want to help us out? Okay. And now, friends. And now, friends. May the grace of God. May the grace of God. And the love of Jesus. And, and the love, love of Jesus. Jesus. And the communion with the Holy Spirit. And the communion with the Holy Spirit. Bless, guard, and keep you this day. Bless, guard, and keep you this day. And always. And always. Go in peace. Go in peace. Friends, remember, love is a second-hand emotion, and that's the best thing you've heard all week. Carry it with you and let the love of Christ flow through you and around you. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.